Hello everyone, welcome to a new channel, um, a new content creator, Tomsy Tube. Um, I, I really want to call it Tomsy Tube's channel, but that just sounds really cringy. Um, so I'll try and avoid doing that. But um, so yeah, this is a, a new channel set up for, for FIFA 21 content. So today we're looking at some some FIFA 21 squads um, and some sort of teams. There's going to be some towards the sort of the top end of the starter budget, which I'd say is up to 500k. We're going to be kicking off the, the FIFA 21 content with the Cream Puff FC um, Ultimate Team, which is my Ultimate Team series. We're going to do like a Chavi to Glory series where we're going to be using Chavi for like the whole of FIFA. I'll explain more about that another time. And then we've also got the Barrow AFC career mode. So that's something I'm quite excited for because if you guys don't know who Barrow AFC even are, they've not been on FIFA yet um, and they've just been promoted into League 2 for the first time. So I'm going to try and take them from the lowly League 2 up to Champions League glory maybe Premier League glory as well, who knows. Um, so quite excited about those two things, but to kick that off, we're gonna have a stream on October the 1st, um, probably around about 6 p.m. because I believe that's when the um, early access actually starts. We're gonna do a pack opening of about 36,000 FIFA points, as well as all of the pre-season pre stuff, all of the pre-order bonuses from the Ultimate Edition, all of that. So that's gonna be a really big pack opening. That's, that's probably gonna take up most of my 10 hours early access on its own. For now I want to show you guys some of these squads that I've put together for FIFA 21 um, starting off with this this cheapish team. So I just want to say guys that this is going to be based off of the FIFA 20 ratings on the squad screen but I'm going to try and put up pictures of the FIFA 21 cards if they're available but right now we don't have a reliable FIFA 21 squad builder. I reckon it's to come up to about 100 maybe 150k but Hopefully slightly cheaper than that because I've tried to mould in some players which uh, probably won't won't uh, be first choice in their positions in their leagues and stuff. So for this team, this first team, we have Hugo Lloris in goal. I understand sometimes in FIFA he doesn't quite translate as well as he does for his card stats onto the actual uh, in-game. But in this FIFA he's had a slight downgrade, he's probably going to be slightly cheaper than he normally is. Plus he's the best French option that you're going to have early game. Um, I'd go with him purely based off of that if nothing else if you want to try out someone that's been upgraded like Mandanda or something like that then give them a go instead but I think Maurice is a great option for an early starter squad and then on the fullback positions you've got a very FIFA 20 fullback pairing in Mendy I mean his 83 rated card looks absolutely ridiculous this year so there's not really much to be said about that and then you've got Mbappé on the right hand side if he's anything like his card was last season he'll be in your teams till December uh, maybe even beyond that it depends on what year he released but yeah, he, he's an absolute monster of a player on this game. And then you've got Kunde and Mancano as a centre-back pairing. Kunde be having a massive upgrade since last year. Pace, physicality, defensive awareness and uh, the dribbling has been buffed as well. So he can actually play on the ball as well. So you're actually going to find him a really useful centre-back this year. But Mancano, he's been a beast since oh, last FIFA. You can change this around a little bit. You can change these, these Kunde, Mancano, Lloris around a little bit. Um, just make sure that you and Babu and your Mendy are getting the links and Zakaria's got at least one weak link in there as well. Moving on to the midfield, so that Zakaria card looks absolutely cracked. What doesn't he have as a defensive midfielder? He is just insane, so I definitely recommend him going into your teams. Valverde's had a massive upgrade, pace upgrade. The rest of the stats look really good for a starter squad, so definitely recommend putting Valverde in. Some people are using the guy from Atletico Madrid. Um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now, but I would, I would suggest Valverde instead. Odegaard this year is going to be a, an underrated player. I would definitely suggest trying him out. He's got great dribbling, great passing. He's got decent pace for someone that's in camp. And then on the wings, uh, you've got Vinicius and Sancho. Sancho's obviously had a pace downgrade, but an overall upgrade to an 87. So he looks like a really strong card this year. Um, just slap something that boosts his pace a little bit and you'll find him tearing people apart. I've got no doubt he normally has outside the foot shot as well. If the meta is of finesse shots, then cracking. He is going to be able to curl those in with either side. You know, he can he can hit it with the outside of his foot to take it to the other top bins. And then you've got Vinicius Jr. on the side. He's just rapid. He's obviously got five star skills as well, so useful player to try and cut inside. Up front, then you've got Erling Haaland, who's had a massive upgrade since last year, 84 rated, and his shooting looks insane. Just the whole card looks insane. Pace, physicality, he's got it all. He normally has quite good curve as well, so I'm guessing he's probably going to have really good curve again this year. It will let him play those curved passes that, that strikers can do and can really devastate opponents with so definitely would recommend putting him in your team. Second team then, so second team is like a French 
Premier League hybrid. In goal you've got De Gea who's had a massive downgrade, probably deservedly since last year. That means to me that he's probably going to be quite cheap, but you can put any Premier League goalkeeper in here. Full backs you've got Firpo and Pereira. So Pereira obviously had a, an upgrade to an 84, looks like a, a full back which can do it all, so I definitely recommend putting him in if you can, but any, full, any Premier League full back can go in there. And then Firpo, it can actually be Mendy, but I put Firpo in just to change it up a little bit, but equally you can put Firpo in the first squad as well. It's up to you. Centre back pairing, so Gomez and Ake. Gomez looks like an absolute beast on this game. I definitely recommend putting him in your team. Ake looks like a good option as well. I wouldn't say he's like as beastly as Gomez, but he still gives a lot for, for an early game centre back, that's for sure. And probably quite a cheap one, I suggest as well, because Manchester City have got so many centre backs. He might be slightly upped in price based on the fact that he's just transferred, but and in midfield, you've got an 86 rated Henderson and an 86 rated Pogba, which I mean, I do think Henderson deserves the 86 rating because he has played really well. Maybe Pogba should be an 87, but you could argue the way he's played. Would you take Henderson or Pogba? I'd take Henderson right now. No, God, please, no, 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 no! But regardless, that's what they have for FIFA. So Henderson as a defensive midfielder looks like he's got everything. He's got dribbling, shooting, passing, defending and physical. Pace, yeah, he's lacking a little bit, but buff that up with, with an engine or with a shadow and you're laughing. So I definitely recommend putting him as a defensive midfielder and then Pogba can then run forward from, from there. Dembele and Adama as the two wingers, but I would suggest playing Dembele in Cam in this because he's gonna have five-star weak foot again. Adama on the wide right and then Martial on the wide left. They're obviously they're two right footers. So Martial's gonna be wanting to cut in, Adama's gonna be wanting to kind of do cross cross goal shots and crosses, which which is okay. The crossing this year is a little bit better, so you'd hope that would work quite well. And then up front, you've got Ben Yedder. He is absolutely terrifying every year for the past two years, especially last year. Last year, he just destroyed people. It was actually silly. People had his player of the month card, which is like an 88, till right till the end of FIFA, and they were still destroying people with it, so. And then the final team. So the final team is like a Bundesliga Premier League hybrid. Um, I just think that this year the Bundesliga is going to be a really good league to use. They've got a lot of really pacey players in some really interesting positions. And obviously Kimmich as well has had that, that position change to CDM, which I think that's a fantastic option. Then they've now got that sort of nimble, um, good agility, but also a really good defensive option in that defensive midfield. So in this team, you've got Manuel Neuer in goal. Manuel Neuer has been great on FIFA for a long time. I'd suggest that's going to continue in this FIFA just because he can rush out of goal and block those shots early on. So I definitely recommend putting Neuer in. Fullback pairing, you've got Davis and Walker. So Davis being maybe underrated a little bit as an 81. He probably should be higher, but that's what we've got. So, but he is still absolutely rapid. Think, oh, I have time, I have time. And then me, 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 the Roadrunner. They have to buy the Roadrunner. So I definitely recommend putting him in your team if you're making a Bundesliga team for sure. Because Alaba, as you can see, has got a position change to centre back. Walker on the other side, like Neuer, he's been great on FIFA for the past three, four, maybe longer than that years. So I definitely recommend putting him in. He's also had an upgrade for some reason. Who knows? And then centre back pairing, so you've got Alaba as your left footed left centre back, so that's that's useful as it is um, for him to be left footed. And then on the right hand side you've got Gomez who, yeah, absolute beast of a player. For two midfielders, you've got Goretzka and Kimmich, so either one of those can play a defensive role. If you even are playing one of them as a defensive role, you could well be playing two of them as box to box. That works. Kimmich obviously has slightly less shooting, but Goretzka is just an all round beast. Kimmich though does have better dribbling and passing, so he'll be able to nip in and, and give you those good sort of final passes in the box if you play in there. It's really up to you and up to your play style if you want to have someone that's good at passing or better at shooting. In Cam, you've got Akai Havertz, who has obviously transferred to Chelsea, so he'll give Mares that link to put him on full chemistry. Gomez, though, won't get full chemistry in this in this formation. I don't really think that's important, to be honest. Um, if that is something that's really important to you, then I'd, I'd try and change around Havertz and Goretzka to someone that's going to give Gomez that full chemistry, so like a Firmino and an Allen, for example. Um, obviously changed Allen from a striker in game like you would do with this anyway. Kai Havertz looks like a great option in this game. He's got more pace than Sancho for some reason. He's probably gonna have less acceleration, but that's not the point. He's got good dribbling, great shooting, great passing, and he's tall as well. So if you are putting balls in the box, he's gonna be able to win quite a few of them, I suspect. Up front, we have Lewandowski. 
what more needs to be said about Lewandowski that hasn't already been said this year. He probably should be a 93 the way he's been playing um, more goals than games this year. He probably deserved the Ballon d'Or. So yeah, this year it looks like you should have some players that have good attack positioning because this year you're going to be able to see them drop back when they're running and, and before you try and put a ball across and they keep running into the net whereas this year they're actually going to hang off on their runs and they're going to wait for you to cut it back. But that only happens with high attack positioning players. So I would definitely suggest trying out someone like a Lewandowski, maybe even like a Harry Kane, but Lewandowski in this team absolutely does fit. If you want to have someone a bit more pacey, you could put Tino Werner in there instead, but yeah, for now I'd definitely suggest putting Lewandowski in because he has got that all-round striking ability. I don't think early on they need to be that fast either because a lot of the centre-backs you'll be coming up with probably won't be that fast. Lewandowski, you, you can put a shadow on if you want to, but in reality Lewandowski is going to do your job. He's strong. Um, he's got great dribbling, he's got great shooting, he's got decent passing as well. So, yeah, I definitely suggest Lewandowski. So that's it. Um, thanks so much for watching. If you think there's anything that I've missed off or if there's any decent squads that you've seen that you'd like to share with me, then please do. I, I, I'd love to see them. I'm going to be using some of these squads as a basis for me to, to buy players for that Ultimate Team series I talked about earlier. So I'd really greatly appreciate seeing your squads as well. If you like the content, please do subscribe. Um, if you just fancy liking the video, that's great too. But yeah, like I said, a share, a subscribe would greatly be appreciated to try and grow the channel. The more subscriptions I get, the bigger pack openings I can do, the more collaborations I can do, and the different variety of content I can put forward. So yeah, if, you, if we can grow the channel, that'd be amazing. So yeah, so thanks so much for watching guys. See ya.